God resists the proud, but he will give grace to the humble. Last year here at App State, I talked to an individual for over an hour who was an atheist. And finally, after talking over and over and over again about issues, I finally asked him two questions. I said, if the God of the Bible truly exists, would you want to know it? And he said, yes, very quickly, very easily, yes. But the second question was more powerful. I asked this student, if the God of the Bible truly exists, are you willing to obey him? And immediately he said, no way. The problem with him was not that he didn't believe in God. The problem was he, by his own mouth, he refused to obey. This is a good message for the, for the claim professing Christians who still go around sinning as much as every other heathen on campus. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I command? Jesus said, if anyone will be my disciple, he must deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. If you claim to be a Christian and also a drunkard, you are not denying yourself. You are not picking up your cross daily. You are not following him. And the promises of God do not apply to you. Jesus said, I know my sheep. They hear my voice and they follow me and no one can snatch them out of my hand. That is a conditional promise. If you are not listening to his voice and you are not following him, then you can be snatched. You are not in his hand in a willful rebellion against Jesus Christ. Uh, in the book of Titus, it says that they claim to know God, but by their actions Obey they God. deny what? him. Uh, being a human does not mean you sin. This flesh, this body, uh, we probably got some biology students and some chemistry students out here. This body is made up of hydrogen, oxygen, uh, calcium, carbon, some other elements. There is nothing sinful about calcium and carbon. Our flesh in and of itself is not sin. This is heretical teaching that is very popular in the modern church, that because you are human, you have to sin. Well, if you are a Christian, let me speak, let me speak to the few Christians out here on campus today. This is a message for the true Christian. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says that no temptation is overtaking you except that which is common to man. And when you are tempted, or that God will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, when you are tempted, He will always provide for a way out. So if your problem is drunkenness, you've admitted to being a drunkard, if your problem is drunkenness, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells us that God will not allow that booze to be so tempting that you cannot put down the bottle and pick up the Bible. If you are a fornicator, listen up, fornicators. What's that say, Harvard? What's it? If you're a fornicator, listen up. God, if you need to become a Christian, then God will not allow any girl on this campus to look so amazing that you cannot resist your primal urges of fornication. Now, uh, whether your problem is homosexuality, God will not allow your lust for the same sex, your vile affection, to be so tempting that you cannot avoid it. Uh, 1 John 5, 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. Maybe we have some English majors out here. What is burdensome? Burdensome means you can't do it. It's very difficult. God's commands are not burdensome. That means we can keep them. It's not that difficult to keep His commands. If you love Him, keep His commandments. 
Jesus told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Out on the college campus, everyone wants to tell us when that story about the woman who is to be stoned. They want to come up and tell us, who's without sin, cast the first stone. Why don't they read a little bit farther into that, into that gospel message where Jesus told the woman, go and sin no more. Did he say go and sin some more? Did he say go and sin uh, a little bit less than you are now? and over time sin less and less? Did he say, go and try your hardest? No, Jesus said, go and sin no more. I think he meant it. The woman was about to be stoned to death. I think he was speaking seriously and not tongue in cheek or metaphorically. Jesus told the man who was cured of being lame from birth, go and sin no more, lest a worse thing happen to you. I think he meant it. I think God was serious when he said, go and sin no more. Uh, and Philippians 4.13, where's the Christians out here? Can any Christian out in the crowd tell me what Philippians 4.13 says? Not counting Brother John. Not counting Brother John. Like, a Christian student, tell me what Philippians 4.13 says. Yay! All right. They know that Bible verse. That's good. Now study the one about drunkenness, though, all right? Study up on that one a little harder. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So let me hear from one of the professing Christians, what sin is it that you have that is impossible to stop doing through Christ who strengthens you? What are the sins, Christians, that you can't stop doing through Christ who strengthens you? Let's hear them. Drunkenness? God will save you from your sins, not in your sins. What is the Apostle Paul's? Uh, what does Apostle Paul say about sinning? Uh, what then? Are we to sin because we're not under the law but under grace? By no means! Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are a slave to that which you obey, either sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. You're going to be a slave to sin. You're going to have a pervert like this guy trying to get you drunk, and you, he's a slave to sin. You will be, his, you will be this guy's slave. What a shame that there might be a girl on this campus who might get that pervert as their slave master because he is a child of the devil. We have too many people out there who are praying to God and not having their prayers answered because of one of, one of the reasons because of what this verse says. God does not answer the prayers of unrepentant sinners. God does not answer the prayers of unrepentant sinners. If you are an unrepentant sinner, don't bother crying out to God and praying to Him about your upcoming exam or about your girlfriend or boyfriend or a job interview. His ears are not open. You must first humble yourself before God. Turn from your sins. Trust alone in Jesus Christ. Get a heart that is clean and pure, washed through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and then your prayers will be heard. So the Bible verse says, we have knowledge that God does not give ear to sinners, but if any man is a worshiper of God and keeps his commandments to him, God's ears are open. The Bible says, but your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God so that he does not hear. Your iniquities, uh, your iniquity, let's see, where is it in the book of Isaiah? But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. If you want your prayers answered, humble yourself before God. Get right with Jesus Christ today. Be washed in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He will turn a heart of stone to a heart of flesh and help you to go and, and Jesus sin no more. said, Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many go that way.
college students, if you are not a Bible-believing, Bible-obeying, born-again Christian, we come out here to give you this warning. You are on the broad road leading to destruction. So broad is the road leading to destruction. Many go that way. But narrow is the path. Difficult is the way that leads to everlasting life. And few there be that find it. So our job today is to be those men who through the grace of God are on that narrow path leading to everlasting life. And our job today is to grab as many sinners off the broad road and compel them to come on to the narrow path. You can be normal Christians like us. Normal, God-fearing, Bible-obeying Christians like us. Look at this. One day, you could be as we are. Wouldn't that be wonderful? One day, this could be you preaching to a wicked and perverse generation. Praise God. He gives us breath in our lungs to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. So God, in His wisdom, actually a wonderful street preacher once told me, Brother John up on the hill, holy banner, credit goes to for this imagery, is that he doesn't believe that God has the broad road and the narrow path going in opposite directions right now, or even parallel where they would never meet. He believes, and I believe it's a beautiful illustration of God's mercy, that God in His wisdom has the broad road and the narrow path intersecting from time to time. And this day is one of those moments. This day is one of the moments when God's narrow path leading to everlasting life is coming smack dab through your broad road to destruction. We're coming right through to ruin your party. We're right through your desire for drunkenness and fornication and pornography and gossip and the narrow path has come before you this day. So choose you this day whom you will serve. Lay your sins down at the foot of the cross. Guys, do it. Do it while you're young, while your mind is open. This is why we love to come out to college campuses because at your age, your mind is open. You're still forming all of your worldviews. You go out and preach to a bunch of 50 and 60 year olds and they don't want to listen to a word you say. They think they know it all. They think they've heard it all. Oh, the college students will listen. And so we come before you with the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but All by right. me. I will now open it up to any questions that are actually valid questions and worthy of a college-educated mind. If your question is invalid, if your question is immature and pathetic, if your question is not worthy of a college-educated mind, I will move on. So who has a good question to the crazy street preacher who comes out here to try and tell you about Jesus? Come on, all you hecklers, who's got a question? I'm going to preach harder. I'm going to preach harder on condemnation and wrath if we don't have any questions. Who's got some questions? No one has... All right. Uh, my, my Christian drunk. The Christian drunk. Okay. Uh, she admitted to drunkenness too. Uh, you, I, I, I respect you more because you didn't raise your hand to being a Christian, although you did raise your hand to being a drunk. She raised her hand to both, which makes her a hypocrite. All right, go ahead. Speak up real. If you ask a question, use your street preacher voice so everyone can hear. I'm ready. All right. Uh, no, there's no such thing as a sinning Christian. There is no such thing. There is no such thing as a Christian drunk. There's no such thing as a Christian homosexual. There is no such thing as a Christian homosexual. There is no such thing as a Christian, no as a Christian uh, fornicator. You must choose you this will serve as for me and my house. Now I have a wife. I know all you ladies want to hug me. I know, I know all you ladies are dying to hug me, 
but I have a wife, I have a wife who will hug me all I want. So let's, I know, I know all you ladies and sodomites are dying to hug me, but let's just say it once, I have a wife who hugs me. Thank you much.